Hi, this is Tim. This is Amber. And unfortunately, if you're watching this video, then chances are you are having some issues connecting from your laptop to your PLC over Ethernet. So we're going to go through a few steps to help you troubleshoot and figure out where your issue is. So what happens if you use both the Ethernet IP method and the device driver's method, and you still don't see your PLC? Since we're at that point, there's a mismatch between the configuration of your laptop and the configuration of your PLC. So there's a couple of things that now you can look for. Is first, is there an IP address in the PLC? And if there isn't, you will not be able to connect to it. You're going to have to use either a boot P device such as our IP Explorer, or you could use Alan Bradley's um, boot P software and assign an IP address to it. Or you could go through the serial port, download your program with their IP configured. But let's say that you see this IP address is 192.168.110. You did all these steps and you still don't see it. Chances are there's an issue with your laptop's IP address then. So we're actually going to change our IP configuration just to show you a few things that could be wrong. So first let's get through how you figure out how your IP address is configured on your PC. To do that, the easiest way is to go to the start menu and just start typing cmd.exe. You should see this old DOS looking program come up. Now one thing, if this does not come up, then go talk to your IT guys because you need access to this. This is a really good troubleshooting tool. And after that, you're going to type ipconfig. And you'll see right now our IP address is 192.168.1.123. Now, I'm not going to get into the weeds of IP configuration because there's whole courses out there for that. But mainly what I would say as a general rule is the first three octets, which an octet is one of the four grouped um, numbers you see there. So in this case, 192.168.1. That part needs to match on both your PLC and your PC. Now, that's a very broad rule, and yes, go ahead and put in the comments how wrong I am. But as a general rule for a PLC programmer trying to connect to the PLC, that rule does work. A few things, don't put your IP address here the same as you have on your PLC, because then you'll have a duplicate IP and it's not going to communicate either. But so we're going to change our IP address just to show what would happen if it wasn't configured right. And to do that, we have this little network icon right here. Hopefully you have it on yours. If not, you may have to do a little Google searching. But we're going to right click it and open Network and Sharing Center. You can also go to your Start menu and put in Network and Sharing Center, and it'll come up that way also. But then we're going to go to our adapter settings. You may have multiple adapters. Um, in fact, here you can see my TeamViewer VPN adapter. Um, my local area network is my USB to Ethernet adapter that I have. You may have a wireless adapter on yours. Uh, but we're going to double click on the network adapter that we are using to connect to the PLC. We're going to click Properties. And then right here, you'll see Internet Protocol Version 4. Now, there is an Internet Protocol Version 6, but we're not going to get into that in this video. But we're going to double click on it, and right here, you can see our IP address. Now, typically, what you will see is that you're going to be on Obtain IP Address Automatically and Obtain, and obtain DNS Server Automatically. This is how when you plug into a strange network and it automatically works with your internet or you hook, you go to a Starbucks and get on their wireless, it's because it's configured that way. So we're going to click OK, and we're going to give it a say. You're going to see it's going to sit here and try to identify this, so we're going to speed up the video now. It's just not as fun when Amber's not here. She, she had spice in these videos. Um, we're going to give it a second. And we're going to come over here to command prompt, and if you hit your up arrow, it'll give you the same command you just used, and we're going to hit the IP config again. And now you can see we have a crazy looking number, 190, 169, 254, 41, 112. That's just like way crazy. Um, and what that is, is if it cannot find a DHCP server, it assigns itself an IP address. Um, now, I have a crazy article that I'll put in the description of how you actually can use this to connect to a PLC, but it's not a good practice. But I know some of you guys out there, especially in your that are in a school environment, um, how do I say it? Um, priorities are different for IT and control people sometimes, and you're not allowed to actually set your IP address of your laptop. And if you're in one of those situations, look at the link in the description. If you're not in one of those situations, don't click that link. But so we can see, I said earlier, the first three octets need to match. And 169, 254, 41 does not match 192, 168, 1. 
And so if we go back to RS Links Classics, we can go back to RS Links, we can see we have a red X through it. Now, another troubleshooting tool, which we'll go through a little more. So, so again, I said earlier, if you can't communicate with an RS Links, don't try to get an RS Logic. So again, here, we have a red X. We've got to work through it. So another good tool in the command prop is the ping command, P-I-N-G. And we type P-I-N-G, and then we go 192.168.1.10, which is the IP address of our PLC, which we can see on the display. When we hit Enter, we're going to get a general failure. Now, we can get in the weeds about what that all means, but mainly, okay, we, um, we can't communicate. So no ping successful. No communicate with the PLC. So if you run into this option, you simply go to your network sharing center, you find your local area network or whatever you're connected to your PLC through, click properties, go to internet protocol version four, and you set your IP address. And to do and once you type it in, now remember the one IP address of my three octet rule that you can't that you cannot type is the PLC's IP address, which is 192.168.1.10. So we're going to type 192.168.1.123. Along with that is a subnet. If you simply hit the tab key after that, it'll automatically put in 255.255.255.0. And that will work for communicating with your PLC. Now, again, there, there are semester-long courses on dealing with IP subnets and the amazing thing they can do to route Internet traffic. But right now, we're just trying to connect to a PLC. But... There is another issue that you could be having right now. What if I accidentally type 192.169.1.123? Looks really close. We click OK. Go through. We can see we're gone. So now we're going to go back to our AB Ethernet IP drive, which should be showing something. We still have a red X. So in this case, we do have an IP address set on our PC. And we have an IP address set on our PLC, but pretty much they're not on the same street. So again, a good troubleshooting tool is to go back to your command prompt and let's ping 192.168.1.10. And again, I just hit that up arrow there. That's why you saw that magically appear there. And I click enter and we see we're still having a general hardware failure. Now, okay, maybe yours says ping unsuccessful, maybe it says other things, but the most important thing is, okay, yeah, we're not um, talking at all. So if we don't see successful, no need to go any further. Don't open an Arch Logics. Let's try to work through this. Now let's get back to our local area connection. And again, Internet Protocol version 4. And now let's correct it to 192.168.1.123. Again, we're not worried about DNS servers because we're just trying to connect to an IP address. The default gateway, don't worry about. Um, it is useful, like, uh, for getting out on the Internet, or maybe if this was transmitting alarms. So there is probably, probably in a later video, we'll go through a little of that. But for now, the biggest thing is first three options the same. And once you have it there, just hit the tab key, and Microsoft will fill in your subnet for you. Now we'll go to RS Links, and there you go. We can see it again. So while we're here, let's go to the command prompt so we can see what it's successful and looks like. Again, I'm going to hit the up arrow. So we see 192.168.110, enter, and you see there, reply from. That's the most important thing you need right now. If you're not getting those replies, don't move on. So now we are ready to go online for our PLC. So we hope that you found this video helpful, and we would love to thank our Patreon supporters for sponsoring this video. You can learn more about how to be a Patreon supporter down in the description. So the big takeaway from this is make sure you can ping the PLC. If you can't ping the PLC, don't try to connect to it. Um, and if you can't ping it, then start looking at your IP configuration. And go ahead, throw it down in the comments. I know this isn't really a good rule I'm giving, but the first three octets of the PLC should match the first three octets of the PC. And the last one needs to be different. And yes, that is not an Ethernet lesson, but that is a lesson in how a PLC programmer can connect to a PLC. Till next time. See ya. PLC is connected to the... Ethernet module. Ethernet module is connected to the... <laughs> Ethernet switch. Ethernet switch is connected to the... Another Ethernet module. Here. Okay. So th this is um, our new children's series that we're practicing <laughs> for, um, where you can actually have books on tape to play to your infants. So they become programmers when they grow up. <laughs>
We had the convoy. The convoy is at night to put them to sleep. Just like we put you to sleep in our bed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, are you ready? We're ready. I am! <laughs> You got this! Hi, this is Tim. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Be sure to subscribe for more great videos. And like this video and comment on what you would like to see next. Visit our website where we offer a full line of PLCs, simulators, control panels, PLC trainers, and more.